Well, I'm just hugely frustrated. My expectations of the Labour Party are not massively high, but they were certainly higher than this. We have in front of us a set of cuts in uh, the incomes to some of the poorest but hardest working people in this country uh, that are unnecessary. Uh, the reality is that Liberal Democrats absolutely in our time in government and still now are committed to balancing the books and clearing the deficit. But these are proposals which are unnecessary and counterproductive. These take thousands of pounds net from the pockets of some of the hardest working but poorest paid people in this country. It renders young people in a position where they've got to choose potentially sometimes destitution or to be in a place which is unsafe because of housing benefit cuts. And it threatens especially people who want to get back to work, who have mental health conditions and yet need help rather than being immediately dumped into a situation where they will be potentially made worse. All those things, I'd have thought it was a no-brainer for a Labour uh, contender, even a Blairite Labour contender, to want to be able to support the Liberal Democrats and others who felt that these proposals were wrong. And I'm just, I'm just disappointed pointed hugely in Harrier and three of the four Labour, leader cont Labour leadership contenders who chose to sit on their hands whilst leaving the heavy lifting to the Liberal Democrats. I mean, there are a lot of, a sizeable number of Labour MPs who feel exactly as you do, and that is why the story and the party is in the news today. So can you can you draw any comfort from the fact, I mean, you, the Lib Dems in that sense are not on their own. There are lots of people who agree with you. No, and I think that is the frustrating thing, that opposing these cuts, which are unnecessary, uh, we are not at all denying the need to balance the books, to clear the deficit. But you do that by making sure there's a balance between some savings and at the same time increasing taxation on those who are the wealthiest people. The thing about this welfare uh, bill, and indeed the budget as a whole, is that it's, it's the balance that is so offensive really that you take money out of the pocket to the hardest working people, young people, families, other people at the same time as the Conservatives want to give a inheritance tax cut to the 6% of richest estates in this country. That's just obviously unfair and unnecessary and so yes it's great to see others joining us in the lobby last night including some uh, uh, Labour backbenchers and indeed one potential Labour leader we shall see uh, but what I am most disappointed with is the sense that this is a time when progressives do need to be working together to hold a Conservative Party which has only just won a general election with a tiny mandate, well a tiny majority and frankly no mandate and yet we let the Tories off the hook when the Labour Party act in such an unbold and unambitious way. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you say unbold and unambitious. Is this partly a situation of this is what happens when a party is without a permanent leader? It will have one in a couple of months from now. But is this perhaps not something almost inevitable within the political cycle where a party, and your party's just gone through it, is, is still trying to find its voice and trying to work out who its leader should be? Do you know, I am confident that had this vote been a week ago and when the Liberal Democrats didn't have a leader, I am confident that we would all have been voting against this. It seems a no-brainer, like I say, to the Labour Party to be opposed to this. But the Liberal Democrats will take the lead if Labour will not. And so I'm proud that we did the right thing last night. I'm also proud that we are saying to the Conservatives that whilst we absolutely accept the need to balance the books and to recover uh, and, and improve our national economy and the finance the public finances need to be put on an even keel. This is a moment where we should be ambitious and including people who are from uh, working backgrounds but from poorer backgrounds and for improving their lot. And that means this is a moment for us to be investing in capital infrastructure, in green infrastructure, in better broadband, in, uh, in better public transport. This is the moment to do just that, to make everybody a bit wealthier and have some more wealth to redistribute.